Okay, now here's where the magic happens, which is why I have a lovely stock photo of a magician pulling all manner of things out of his hat. Um, this is where it starts to get really neat how we can set up with Google Tag Manager this free um, add-on service that you can plug onto your website just like Google Analytics with a piece of JavaScript snippet is gonna do so much magic for us to build this closed loop system. Why do we need it? Well, there's a very big problem when it comes to tracking URL parameters. Um, and maybe you've encountered this before. By default, if I, let's say I make a Facebook ad and this here is the full URL that the ad sends someone to. It is the StatWax homepage. We have source, we have a medium, we have a campaign. You can see all that right there and that's great. But it's only great on that single page. As soon as someone clicks to another page, those fall away. By default, a form will not grab those parameters if they're not in the URL. They're just gone, right? We need them to stay with the user until they're ready to fill out the form. Session cookies are what make it happen. I have a toddler at home. There's bound to be a Sesame Street reference in every presentation I do now because of this, and Cookie Monster is perfect for this. Session cookies are the most important cookies and really the most important piece to what we're building here today for this closed loop system. A session cookie stays with the user. It is created when someone arrives on the website and it stores some as yet to be determined, but we will, piece of information. That information follows the user from page to page to page the entire time they're on the website. And at any point with a little bit of code, we can recall the value of that cookie and do something with it. That is what's gonna make this magic happen. And you can do it in Google Tag Manager with a single script. So here's basically, in a nutshell, what we're gonna do. I'll jump back up. We're going to take parameters from a URL, load them into a session cookie, so that if the URL changes, we can still see the parameters somehow. And that is what we're gonna capture in our forms to make sure our original source of tracking is actually persisting across the entire website browsing session and making it into our CRM. And that is a big first gap to close. It's not the only thing we're gonna close up today in this loop, but it's a big first step to get past. So a single script in Google Tag Manager will accomplish this for you. Do not take notes right now because I've done something that I hope is very helpful and I've actually created a link to a Google Doc, <coughs> excuse me, that contains the script we have written along with some comments on how to modify it should you need to. Because there are some specifics to this particular script. One, I've whitelisted out the domain that we're using um, and you will need to put your own domain. I've left some comments in the document about how to adjust the uh, lifespan of this cookie we're talking session cookies. We want tracking to expire when someone leaves the website. You could theoretically create a cookie that lasts for 30 days, 24 hours, a year, it doesn't matter. So if they come back, the tracking is still there. That's really up to, um, up to you. We also have an area here that takes the tracking parameters and sends them to the hidden fields on the form. This script that we have written for a specific client uses HubSpot because they use HubSpot. We'll get into a little bit uh, in a minute why that will need to change based on what your form is like. But all you need to know right now is there is a script, it is this, that in a single Google Tag Manager tag can help take parameters like these ones at the very top, these UTM, source medium, et cetera, but any parameters that you've named and put in a URL and actually transfer them to hidden fields on your form so they go into the tag and into your CRM. So let's step through it really quick. Step one, what we've written is one at a time when someone lands on a page, as soon as it loads, 
this script is going to fire in milliseconds, one at a time, th through each named parameter that we've defined. And it's going to look for that parameter in the URL, whatever it equals, it's going to look for that. And if it finds it, it's going to take that equals value. It's going to create a cookie with the same name as the parameter, and it's going to store that value in that cookie. Then, it's going to look on the page and on every page that loads, it's going to look for a form field with the same name as that parameter. Throwback, here's why it's important that when you create those CRM fields, you're careful about the names. They must match for this to work. Otherwise, there's a lot more code modification you'd have to do. So every time the page loads, the cookie's been created, it's going to look for a form field on that page with that same name. And if it exists, it's going to find the cookie of that name, pull the value, and put it in that form field. And it's just gonna do that every single time. So you might ask if it runs every time a new page is loaded, won't it just overwrite the cookie? That would be a great question. It is a great question. And the answer is no, because after the first page, the parameters fall off the URL. When this script runs, it's only gonna look for the parameters in the URL. If they're not there, it will not create a cookie. Meaning when the cookie's created upon the landing on the website, it's there and it does not get overwritten for the rest of the site browsing session unless they reload it with new parameters in it, in which case you would want those new parameters anyway. So just because it runs on every single page, the fact that the parameters fall off, which was the original problem, is actually part of what makes this whole thing run. So now, just as a kind of screenshot demo for you, let me check my time. All right, we're doing well here. Now, let's use the same example. I go to the StatWax website, campaign, source, medium. We see I've filled these in. Here I am landing on the site with parameters in the URL. If I pull up the developer console, which you can do, I'm in Google Chrome, um, and you can go to, I believe it's View Developer Tools uh, Developer Console, and go over here to Application Cookies, you can actually see all the cookies that have been created on your website. Here are the ones that were just created by this code. As soon as I landed on this page, it took each of these three parameters and it created one at a time campaign source medium with the value you see it's on my domain and it is a session cookie it will expire when my session ends now i've clicked to another page there are no more parameters in the url yet my cookies persist they are still there because my session is active they have not cleared out they remain which means if i go fill out a form now with hidden fields, names, UTM underscore medium, et cetera, the script is going to pull those values of webinar test, put them in those fields, and when my submission goes into the StatWax CRM as a lead, I will then see in the CRM, oh, here is the campaign source and medium this particular lead came from. And when I eventually become a customer, I can still see that information as part of my overall record. There are multiple other ways to do this. One of them is much more difficult and quite frankly above my head as well because it is fully web development and that is PHP scripting. PHP is server side. You cannot see it in a website source code just by going to amazon.com and looking at the page source, you're not gonna see their PHP. It is a specific type of server side scripting. You can use PHP if you know it to create session variables and then call them when the form is posted um, or submitted basically, <clears throat> excuse me. So if you have some good web devs who understand PHP, you can build this concept out without the use of Tag Manager. You can also use Tag Manager to push the parameters from the URL into the data layer. That is a, something for another webinar because we could go for hours just about the uh, Tag Manager data layer. So I won't belabor the point today, uh, but it is a way to avoid creating cookies, which is something that's very big now in an increasingly more privacy first digital world. 
there are also scripts for Tag Manager that take your URL parameters and just every time someone clicks a button to another page on your site, it rewrites them onto it. So they're always there. Uh, if you see tutorials for that, I strongly advise against that option. Every time we've tested it, it slows the page down. It is buggy. It does not always work. I would strongly advise against option three there. Now, there's a wrinkle that we have not talked about, but it is perhaps the most important piece that's going to help close the loop on this analytics when all is said and done. It is the Google Analytics client ID. What is that? Go into your Google Analytics sometime. On the left-hand side, hit um, Behaviors, User Explorer. You will see client IDs just as you see on the right side of, of this slide. Every time someone lands on a page with Google Analytics on it, GA assigns them a client ID. It is unique to the person and device. If I use this laptop I'm on to go to statwax.com, my client ID is always going to be the same. Always. If I go to statwax.com on my phone, that will have a client ID. Different for each device, but always one ID for that particular device and user. It is anonymous. It is a string of numbers by which you can do very little right off the bat. But Google Analytics creates it automatically behind the scenes every time. You cannot see it in the URL. So you can't pass it as a parameter. You can't call it as a URL parameter. It is stored in a cookie called underscore GID. Take a look on any website sometime as I showed you to get to the developer console and search for that and see if you don't see it there. If the site is using Google Analytics, it will be there. The problem is, so your first statement might be, oh, perfect, it's a cookie. Let's use the same scripting we just wrote and just call that value as well and pass it to the form field. Unfortunately, that is highly against Google's recommendation. Several reasons. One, the client ID is not this full value. It is just a piece of the string of numbers. You have to strip some of it off so there's extra coding involved there. It wouldn't be difficult, but it's extra. Google also says that they often change the format and the cookie name and usage, especially as more things move to a cookie-less world. So Google says, do not store the client ID by calling into our cookie. Fortunately, because it's Google, they've given us a solution. We need that solution because at the end of the day, we need to capture that client ID. We want to capture that client ID and send it to the CRM just as we do all of our other parameters because it's going to help tie our attribution together. So here's what Google says to do. They have given us the script, basically. You can find this many places, Google documentation included. Put it in a tag manager variable, very important. This is not a tag, this is a variable. What you wanna do is when tag manager loads, the variable will run this script from Google, which will get the client ID and store it as a variable to use elsewhere in tag manager. You can see in the JavaScript on the right, there's an area where you put in your specific Google Analytics ID number, the script does the rest. You end up with a variable in Tag Manager that upon page load will populate with that user's client ID. Then run a tag with this script in it. And you'll see <clears throat> on line four of the script, at the very end, you'll see a couple of brackets, SW client ID and a couple closed brackets. That is your variable name. Whatever you name that variable in Tag Manager, put that there. What this script is doing is it is saying, take that variable that stored the client ID and map it to the form field of whatever name is in line three. Remember I talked about you have to modify slightly based on your form setup. HubSpot has a naming convention on their input fields. It's .hs-input. Uh, Salesforce is different. 
input brackets name equals this is the most common CSS like selector um, method of identifying and doing something with a form field. But you need to figure out the naming convention of it because depending on the service that built the form, it might be slightly different. When all else fails, try it as you see it here first, just input bracket name equals and then the name of it. In this case, we called it GA ID. You could call it client ID. You could call it Bob's ID number. It doesn't matter. Just make sure the name is there and matches up. That's the name of your field. But how it looks in the source code, that's what you need here because what the script is doing is it's looking down the source code of your page and saying, where is the element with, that matches this code? Oh, here it is, input name equals, perfect. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna set its value to that client ID. And basically what's 